Well, joining me now is Angela Diffley, our foreign editor. She was listening to that speech with me. And Angela, uh, a few words came up again and again when Biden spoke. He talked about compassion. He talked about peace. But he also talked about economic opportunity. What did you make of the speech and the particular themes he chose to use? Yeah, he was very much uh, talking about the fact that this uh, peace accord signed uh, in 1998, peace is not inevitable. You have to work at it. Just to remind uh, our viewers who's who in Northern Ireland, so the 30-year-long troubles, as they were called, uh, which uh, led to the death of about 3,500 people. There were two broad communities, the pro-British mostly Protestant community called the Unionists and those who wanted Ireland to become part of uh, Northern Ireland to become part of the Republic of Ireland, mostly Catholic, and they were called the Nationalists. So those are the two groups. The Good Friday Agreement largely ended uh, 30 years of troubles uh, and the Americans were hugely important in brokering that accord. Mm. It's, it's, it's uh, not uh, uh, an exaggeration to say that they really were very, very implicated in it. So Biden here, very much speaking to a younger generation, many of whom will not have known that extreme sectarian violence. And he's really explaining to them that it always needs to be worked at. Also, the importance of investment. He said again and again that uh, in order for peace to endure, the economy needs to work, that they go hand in hand. If the economy is working, peace is more likely. If peace is there investment is more likely. He also uh, ticked a number of boxes. Joe Biden, in different contexts back home in America, makes a lot of his Irish ancestry. He has said on occasions, I'm a pri proud Irish Catholic. Now, that does not sit well with the second community that we were talking about. And so he has gone out of the way in this speech to reach out as well to the other big community in Northern Ireland. He talked about how important Protestants from Northern Ireland and were in the founding of the United States, how vital they are in United States life. And he's very keen to be seen as a bridge builder. Joe Biden, by nature, is a bridge builder. That's how he became known in the United States. And this speech is very much trying to keep hope alive at a time when the Good Friday Accord is slightly fragile. It's worth noting this accord doesn't even have the same name. Mm -hmm. Protestants tend to call it the Belfast Agreement. Catholics tend to call it the Good Friday Accord, although both believe in Good Friday as a Christian festival. So it's, it's a delicate issue and he doesn't want to upset anyone in that short visit. Uh, and uh, viewers may have noticed that he was speaking there at the University of Ulster rather than where you might perhaps expect for a world leader to speak, which is at Parliament, at, the, at Stormont. Why wasn't he speaking at Parliament today? Well, one of the things is he's, he's talking to young people and that's always hopeful. They are the future. But the main reason is that this is a very delicate time under the Belfast Accord, Good Friday Agreement, whatever we're going to call it. One uh, of the uh, elements of that was the setting up of an Irish a Northern Irish Parliament in a building called Stormont, which is why it's often referred to as Stormont, a Northern Irish Parliament and a local government which can uh, decide on affairs, agriculture, education, justice, health, a number of issues and uh, elements of the economy as well. Now, uh, that has been in place for 25 years. For 10 of those 25 years, one or other of the key parties has been boycotting it, and so it has not been sitting. At the moment, it's being boycotted by the unionists, the DUP, the Ulster Unionist Party, Democratic Unionist Party, and so it is not sitting. There is no parliament for him to visit. It is an empty building at the moment. This makes local people very angry because these MPs uh, are being paid, and I think they're now on a lesser salary than they were, but they are being paid, and public services are not being delivered in the way they should. So local people on both sides of the sectarian divide are very angry about that and fed up that, yet again, this uh, parliament is being boycotted. The reason it's being boycotted at the moment on the democratic unionist side, the uh, that unionist population is to do with Brexit. I don't know if we have time to go into briefly, that. Briefly, Angela, if you can. Very briefly. Brexit has had a big impact recently in Northern mm. Ireland. Broadly, the nationalist Catholic uh, community who wanted uh, Northern Ireland to be part of the Republic of Ireland broadly voted to stay in Europe. The pro-British unionist Protestants voted to leave Europe. 
that is what happened uh, because it was part of a wider United Kingdom vote. So Britain left Europe, including Northern Ireland. Then the unionists within Northern Ireland who had voted for Brexit decided they didn't like the arrangement for Northern Ireland because it put a border between the Irish Sea for trade. That made them feel less British. So it has cost, it's caused a lot of... Uh, annoyance on both sides, Brexit, and uh, Rishi Sunak was recently able to reach an agreement with the European Union, which most people are happy with. Those Ulster unionists are not, and that is why they're still boycotting the local government. All right, an impressively brief explanation of how Brexit fits into that story. Thanks very much. Angela Diffley, our foreign editor there.